good, friend? This is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show. Ooh, there it is. Look at it. Dun, 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 dun. That's where it is. And it's me, your host. And I've got my friend, and his name is Michael Helmke. I'm going to bring him on. He's our, our guest today, and we're going to talk about marketing. It's Michael. Hi. Here it's we Martin are. Michael. How are you doing, Brad? I'm doing good. You know, I've been running into a lot of Michaels. I just got done working with a coach, and his name is Michael. And then there's another person I connected on online, Michael. And then there's an email uh, campaign that I've been getting from a guy whose name is Michael. And then there's Michael Helmke. And you know, you know how I remember yours? How? Because of the helm. The ah. Kirk, Captain Kirk on the helm. That's my mnemonics for programming my brain. Because you're in Very control. Good. I am. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> the control concierge. No, the digital control concierge. The digital concierge. That's right. That's right. Let me get that. I'm going to grab that so people know. I got that on here somewhere, I thought. Yes, I do. Because it's digitalconcierge.net. Yes, that's its own story. But yes, .net. Now, how do we, how do we remember that it's .net? Because... You're a marketing guy and you cast a big net and bring all these people in through the top of the funnel and then hone them down to they get to the bottom and then you find out where their money is. And exactly. And that's what we're here to talk about today, I think. <laughs> exactly. Sales. I hate sales and I'll tell you why. Um, it's not that I um, have a fear of calling people. It's just that there's a lot of little elements in the whole outbound sales process Whenever you make a phone call, it's an interruption on a person, whether you send them an email or a text or a phone call or write them a letter, it's interrupting their time. Less with the letter because they open it up and all that kind of thing. But anything else, it's an interruption in their day. And then number two is, if I believe in the product and to sell, you're supposed to really believe in the product. If I believe in it, it's kind of a no brainer for me. And I used to produce trade shows and we had a booth mm. at a trade show for home improvement where... The booths are $695, and if someone got a big contract for putting in windows and doors, that could be a $10,000 gig. So you're not willing to invest $697 to make $10,000, and you got two days to stand there and have people that have homes that are looking to improve their homes. Otherwise, they wouldn't be at a home improvement expo. And I got to sell this guy on this idea? I feel like giving him a... <laughs> I don't like sales. A lot of people don't like sales. You're not the only one. Um, <laughs> and 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 but I, but you know you're looking at it the right way as far as it's you spend money to make money, but what a lot of people miss is the relationship. And I'm sure that hasn't really been your problem, but I get hit up all the time on LinkedIn by people who want to connect and then immediately just want me to start looking at their product and buying their thing. And I don't even know who they are yet. So right. that's. That's the that's what we talked about last time, and that's a, a really important part. If you can get that relationship going and get to know what your customer wants, and rather than selling to them, try and be a trusted advisor. Try and figure out in conjunction with them if they could even use your help. Because if they can't, don't keep bothering them. Let them go. Find someone else. Right. And then going back to the trade show situation, the experience of it is people are at the booth and they give the person in the booth is giving them the whole pitch and talking about all benefits and all the features. And then the person says, no, I just kind of look and it's kind of just curious. <laughs> They're not, they, not cool. they say that. Well, you know, it's funny. There's there's that adage in sales that the customers always lie. And it's not, you know, it's not necessarily that they're mean or they're bad. It's just that, you know, if you're doing business with people, your prospects are often not quite telling you the truth because they don't want to give away everything. They, they think they're at a disadvantage. Well, so you have I know, to... but, uh, when I go to a store, when someone says, can I help you with something? It's like, no. <laughs> I'm just looking. I just can't, wandered in for fun. <laughs> but if they, but if they start on a personal level and start developing a relationship, and like, mm -hmm. hey, did you make it down to the art fair today? You know, mm -hmm. you start on a casual relationship, and we start to like each other. Right. I'm more apt to listen to what you're trying to put in my, you know, you're allowing you to put your hand in my pocket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. Which is a pretty intimate place for their hand to be. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next topic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is fun. 
Well, so, it, it's sort of true. I mean, if you think about it, there's mm -hmm. that other analogy in sales that, uh, you know, you go to the nightclub, you see an attractive person across the way and you just run up, kiss them on the mouth and say, let's get married and have kids. That's the direct sales process. It doesn't work that way. You know, Everyone so keeps sales. doing it, though. I get that every day. Well, I think they do on the digital end because they're so the human factor is like gone and mm -hmm. they think that, oh, I just give you my video and it'll do the sale for me. Right. But right. they even so it may educate me and go, hey, that is a good product. But I didn't like that jerk that stuck that thing in front of me. So I'm going to go find somebody that's nice that sells that product mm -hmm. and they go off on the Internet and do something else. Right. Right. Well, and that's that's where I'm finding even with COVID and no, no in-person meetings as much, online networking is still working really, really well. You can, you can meet people, you can expand your network, you can have one-on-one -on -one meetings, you can get to know people, and it's, it's, it's still a great way to do business. The, the, the networking part? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's even, um, I don't like the word networking because it makes me feel like I'm a, a Piece of digital data flowing. <laughs> you're a you're a cable. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think it's more social business, mm -hmm. and that's what it's like. When I was doing more event related stuff, what we'd do is we would get a bunch of people together that are in the event industry, and we'd put them on a boat on the Mississippi River, and we just enjoy the view and the cruise, and you're on there for two hours with the same people. You develop that relationship. And you get into conversation about the kids and soccer. And then they go, so what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a caterer over at D'Amico Catering. Oh, really? Well, we're doing a company picnic for 3M. Maybe we should connect. Right. And the relationship is, was, was bonded first before that. And you can duplicate that. You, you're really good at your emails. I get, I get your emails because we're working oh, together. thank you. And they're very, um, I mean, nice subject line. And they're mm -hmm. not uh, long. and. You're not pitching stuff, you're just talking about things. And I like how you use the bullets to make it much easier to read because some people, they don't, especially on like social media, there's no line breaks. It's all one big, giant, long paragraph. And that's like, um, just like I just got done talking. I just talked a long sentence to you. Why don't I give you some air time? <laughs> yeah, talking's one thing. But yeah, it, it's funny how especially because people are reading their email on phones and small screens now you you easily it doesn't take much to get that wall of text where your entire screen is just words and so a lot of people have adapted their writing style and i've done this i've actually just... got one of your emails right here i wonder if i could put it up there and you can see it see how oh, that yeah. hey ladies and gentlemen see how well that's done with the yeah. bulleted and stuff like that All a lot space. of white space doesn't Easy doesn't seem intimidating yeah, and just I like a, that. a call to action on the top and a call to action on the bottom. Right. Of course, you like it. You wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so you got to have a relationship. Business requires relationships. I mean, good business, the kind that that turns out well and makes you the money. You know, like in those groups, you see those because that's a good place to be able to network just like you mm -hmm. go to a BNI meeting or a, a yeah. convention or whatever. Yeah. There's, there's a place where they congregate. So that's kind of like the groups that are on LinkedIn and Facebook mm -hmm. and other places. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of people tend to just get on there and go, hey, I'm selling cars or, hey, I'm an insurance company. If you ever want insurance, give me a call. And they're just putting their thing on there. There's no communication going on yeah how, how can that be remedied do you think well i've gotten a lot of success by going into those groups and answering questions first you start out here, here's here's a here's a step-by-step -step process for this whole thing find a group where you think your customer is going to be join that group hang out and watch the messages for a while and don't do anything else a while is a couple of days then start liking some posts, Con heart them, like them, give them a thumbs up, but don't comment yet. Just, you know, by doing that, you're showing that you're in the group and you're active. Then maybe you start commenting. Maybe there's someone who has a question that's right in your wheelhouse and you know the answer and you just write a really good answer to that question that's not trying to get you anything, but just showing that you're helpful. 
and by the way, that you know what you're talking about. And if you just follow those three steps and don't even ask for business, you're going to get people who are going to start connecting with you offline or outside of the group. They're going to send you friend requests. They might even message you back. They might even comment back. And you're going to meet people that way you wouldn't have otherwise met. And at that point, when they've reached out to you, you still don't sell them yet. You just start, you know, do some more conversation, talk about how they got into the group, talk about favorite sports teams, whatever, try and get to know them. And mm. it works really well. It takes some time, but all these things take time. But you know, that that's of of the things you can do on social media to help your business, that's probably one of the more effective free ones that just costs you some time. So so it's definitely a matter of patience. Yes. And being helpful. I get that. But here's a challenge that I run into often is you start developing these relationships with these people and then all of a sudden they disappear because mm -hmm. there's other things they've got going on. The internet is so vast <laughs> that they take off to some other place or maybe they're on to some other interest. Right. How do you, how do you keep that relationship? I mean, I've even got people that I had met at networking events and now sometimes I feel like I'm interrupting them because they're busy on another project because mm -hmm. the thing is with the internet and these platforms, there's just one place to be and you're right. kind of basically talking to one person granted we got two here right. and we got a few people that were watching but all those people that are watching right now they're all individually watching this so when we say hey folks how are you that's not what that one individual wants to hear mm -hmm. yeah and i'll say hey how are you and i shouldn't point at the thing because then you're pointing in their face <laughs> Bump my nose. It's, it's a weird thing, the whole uh, personality and the digital um, ethics and morals and etiquette, I guess. It is. It is. I think there's, to answer your question, I think there's two things. I think one that I do is I keep a list of people I'm trying to get close to, and I keep notes on how often I've last reached out to them somehow online, whether it's checking their social media posts and commenting and liking stuff or sending them a direct message. That's a more direct time consuming way. The other thing, of course, is if you have an email newsletter, invite people to join your email newsletter. Now, you, you still can run into the same problem of doing a hard sell on that. So you got to be kind of gentle. You want to actually know the person a little bit first. But email, I have found, you just commented earlier on it, is a really great way to stay in touch with people and keep them thinking about you. Um, so I, I do a mixture of both. I do a mixture of I have my email list that goes out to people who are closer to me, and there's a certain set of people who I'm pursuing and wooing and and commenting on and giving them attention online to get closer to them. I had an idea yesterday, and I'm going to pass it by you and the listeners here. But the the concept of the I'm going to put this back up here because I just like the concierge concept, and you Thank like you. it because it's yours. Smiles. He's he's the digital concierge.net <laughs> right there. That that the, being a concierge is a relationship. Like mm -hmm. when when you're at a, again because of the hospitality industry that I've been in the hotel, there's people that frequent that hotel multiple times and they get to know the concierge and the concierge tells them where the restaurants are and how do you go on what tours and where the show is happening and all that and they they end up developing that relationship. So my idea that I had, because I've done a lot of these interviews, just like what we're doing here, and I've got hundreds of them, but a lot of these people, I don't hear from them anymore because they're they're on YouTube somewhere deep, deep in the, in the basement somewhere. And I thought about creating a Facebook group of Magic Brad and friends of the people that I interviewed and get them because they probably got a Facebook account. Mm -hmm. and if they don't, I'd probably create a LinkedIn group like this. So these are all my people that I know, and I can stay in contact with them because, like I said, they're they're gone now. They're someplace else. It's it's kind of like you know you go to the the class reunion with all your friends that you used to have in school, and after the class reunion, they all go back to their families, and you don't see them for another five years. Right, right. I like how that. How do you get them into a spot? Do you think they'd be offended by being invited to another group? 
No, not if you, well, and you, I'm sure you have contact information for all those people as well. I would send them each a personal invite because to me, the value, that's, that's a really cool idea because a lot of the, I'm sure, I know you interview all kinds of people, but there are different groups within that, within that cohort. And so there's certainly going to be opportunities for collaboration among you and them in different groups within that whole audience and well, maybe virtual. Is. There's yeah. some like dating coaches and others that are uh, divorce uh, right. lawyers, divorce right. attorneys. Right. And then there's uh, like rekindling a marriage. So, you, you know, you've, you've basically got a the, the beginnings of a networking group just laying about there in your archives that you could create. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right, right. But the, that was part of my concern is like, because uh, I get people all the time and I don't know if it's hmm. Facebook and LinkedIn that are automating all this, but please like my page. I think it's like, who are you? And why would I like that page? It's not even relevant to me. Well, and, and, and you know, I will say I'm I've been just turning down every single page and group in or page invite I've gotten lately because I, I just don't think it's very effective. But I really like the idea you have of a a social group among your Magic Brad alumni. And I think if you reached out to those folks all through email and said and just had a link to the group in the email if they wanted to join up and give them a couple bullets on why why it would benefit them to meet all these other people and how you're going to run the group i think you'd be a pretty good response rate so a, a more passive approach rather than say hey join this group remember us we got to get together well i think it's a more warm approach i think it's a more it's a more personal approach because you're not because i, I that's the thing i don't like about the the facebook like my page thing is it's completely impersonal and i don't remember who this person is it's just this box saying like my page and i just feel it's really it seems disingenuous to me but your your idea could have so much value for these people to find like-minded peers and partnerships and you have your opportunity to do additional marketing to these folks to show them other ways they can market their business other ways you can help them market their business through paid traffic and stuff and here i am pitching your stuff which is great for all of us so that's what we're here for that's what we're here for <laughs> um so that's a great idea brad you should do it well i'm gonna good um in fact that'll give me something to do the rest of the day because i was wondering what am i going to do now and after this <laughs> like, nothing going on. right so right. i'm gonna pull that together it's, it's just that i have a lot of groups already so mm -hmm. and a lot of them are uh, ineffective groups so maybe I, I you know facebook doesn't like you renaming things unless they're very mm. similar right so it's almost right. just disband one group and start over right right no that's a cool but idea. we've been going for 18 minutes we got another two three we can talk and uh i don't know if there's any comments in here i think i see a little red dot there there were a couple of things I wanted to make sure we got to, especially because I, I promised them in the email, I the, the promotional email I created for this. So we've talked about relationships. Our topic today is about getting the money. And, you know, you have to have a relationship with your client to get the money. There are some annoying technical details with getting money. It could be that you, you, Brad, could come over to my house and just give me some cash, but people are safety conscious these days. We don't like that. Plus, you might be far away, and I still want to do business with you. So how do we do the online business thing? And so I would briefly point people at, say, free invoicing through stripe.com which is an online payment platform. It's free to join up. You can create invoices to your heart's content, have them emailed to your clients. They can pay you online with a click on a link. You don't need a website for this. You don't need any digital technology for this, just a bank account and a Stripe account. It's easy. Um, you can do invoicing through something inexpensive like QuickBooks Self-Employed, which I think is $12 a month. Um, and those are the easiest kind of quick and dirty ways to do this. You can also have a simple website, a single landing page, and have your customers come there, pay online, book meetings with you via Calendly or 
Book Like a Boss are my two favorites. And just things that are not hard to set up um, or to find someone to set up with you really quickly so that you can have an online presence, take appointments, charge people for your services and get going and get back to that selling thing that you don't like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just riffing here. Yes, Help me. sir. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't mind selling. I don't like the process. The, the, exactly. Yeah, it's exactly. kind of weird. But a lot of people don't like selling. And, right. Uh, but the, the cool thing about building the relationship is I think the fruit is ripe enough where it'll just fall off the vine mm -hmm. by the time. So if you have the, that payment processor, I think also um, like Stripe versus PayPal, I noticed that PayPal has the ability to pay with PayPal and then you can use a credit card too, but it's on the bottom and not so noticeable. Right, right. I find with PayPal, I'm always struggling to try and figure out how to pay with my credit card versus logging into my PayPal account. Right. And so I, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not a big, I'm not big on using PayPal. I know right. people like it and all, but it's, it seems more complicated to me sometimes for the buyer. Okay. Well, I think we got that covered and uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about, see, we're talking about getting the sale and um, there's this new thing that's coming up and it's called that cryptocurrency. What are your thoughts on that? See, we're talking about money. You're a digital guy. I am a digital guy. Um, so many angles to go off on that. Um, everything I know about, say, Bitcoin is that it's really slow to make the transactions. Like the transactions don't clear very quickly. Whereas if I'm, if I'm buying something with a credit card, the money transfers really, really fast and the transaction's done immediately. And there have been some technical issues with the Bitcoin network where a transaction can take hours. And I don't know how that works for buying stuff very efficiently. I agree, because when I buy something, I want to see something that validates that it's been that it was a successful transaction. There's but, you know, one other thing. There's also there's also been a challenge where because the price of Bitcoin is so volatile, it bounces up and down so fast. I've known some vendors who have dropped support for it because they couldn't keep up with changing their prices fast enough. It's like you have massive inflation and deflation of products over a span of weeks and it's just, it's hard to deal with. Well, so aside from the uh, using it for our practical businesses, just the, the concept of cryptocurrency in general, to me, this is my take on it because I don't mm -hmm. quite understand it all. I look at it as the blockchain technology is just technology that encrypts something so that if the other person can get it on the other end. It just mixes it up so nobody can steal it. Mm -hmm. So there's the blockchain technology. And then you've got Bitcoin, then you've got Ethereum, and there's going to be other people that are going to develop other things. I think that perhaps, I don't know if there's going to be like a one world currency. I don't think that's going to happen. I think every country is going to want to have their own thing. So every country is going to have their own Bitcoin or whatever they're going to call it. And there may even be individual blockchain types of technology. I don't know that that's just, there's just one of those. So I think it's going to, some people think there's going to be like just one big thing and it's all going to be global currency and you just pass <laughs> money back and forth. I think it's going to break off just like, uh, it was a smart thing. It's like Starbucks uh, coffee cards, you know, gift cards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you buy that, it turns into Starbucks money. So you can't mm -hmm. spend it at Caribou or Dunn Brothers. Right, right. Starbucks money. So that's kind of what's happening to me. The mm -hmm. Bitcoin is the Bitcoin and the Ethereum is the Ethereum. Mm -hmm. And the Brad coin is going to be the Brad coin, you know? <laughs> it, well, it, and it's a, it's a, this is getting into economic philosophy, but it's a, it's a pure example of the power of belief and money. Because mo money has no inherent value. It's a piece of paper. It right. has value because we collectively think it has value. And now it's not paper, it's just data. Right, right. Well, and, and even our, what we would call our, our real money is rarely paper. It's a number in a computer somewhere. It doesn't, it never exists in any kind of tangible form. It just shovels around the computer networks from bank to bank. And even if it's gold, it's still not valuable. Gold is, I, I gather, quite plentiful. If, if people wanted to do a mineral-based currency, they should do platinum at least, if but not something. 
<laughs> you, know, you gotta have food and water to survive. Right, right. I think real estate is more valuable than gold is, at least it's shelter. It's true, yes. Gold is just heavy and shiny. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We can always paint things gold and save the save the weight. You could paint it on a rock, and if you want the weight, I that's guess. right. Yeah, that's it's right. a it's an interesting thing. Money is just basically a byproduct of energy, and it's just a method of measuring mm -hmm. exchange. And stuff. Right, right. Anyways, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> I, I've I've not understood it. I, I I've kind of understood it more than I probably give myself credit for. But some people are talking about you got to get in this thing because this is uh, the new digital, yeah, whatever, you know. <laughs> From the technology side, it's fascinating to me. From the economic and policy side, I don't quite get it as as a future thing. But technologically, it's a wonder. Well, Star Trek, you know, they they use dilithium crystals to pay for stuff. I thought that was just a power source. That was a currency well, as well. well. They, they use stuff to, to buy the dilithium crystals. Mm, right. The lithium right. crystals, power source. It's like oil. Yeah. Right. right. It right. has value because it's energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my God. We are going into the future, you know. <laughs> I, I often say Captain Kirk never carried a wallet. <laughs> it's just going to be all fluffy mm -hmm. stuff. Right. 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 Well, Michael, the digital concierge, I appreciate you taking the time with us again today. And this is the end of our three uh, three video series. Mm -hmm. But who knows? Maybe we'll come up with something else on another another, yeah. another yeah. line of. Uh, I like this doing is, the series things. Yeah, no, this has been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed I've enjoyed working with you on it. Perfecto. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna sign this off, Michael. I appreciate you again taking the time. You have a good rest of the day. You too. We'll, we'll, we'll talk soon. Peace. Talk to you soon. Peace. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and berries, I'm going to sign this one off. I appreciate you spending some time with us. And if you want to know more about me, just Google the keyword Magic Brad, and you'll find me on the Internet and find all the things I've done in the event world and the digital marketing world and maybe some other stuff I don't want you to find. So peace, love, and happiness. This is Magic Brad signing off. Enjoy the rest of your day. Be well. Bye. <laughs>